Welcome back everyone to another NASCAR Heat 5 setup video. Today we're focusing on Auto Club Speedway. This track is really wide and has a lot of grooves available for racing. We're going to be talking not only the cup cars, but Xfinity and trucks as well. So let's get started. Before we get into the setup discussion, there's a few other pieces of information that I wanted to pass along. First, be sure to check out the video idea talking about NASCAR Heat 4 setups in NASCAR Heat 5. In the video, I talk about whether or not these Heat 4 setups work in Heat 5, and also my approach to setups in NASCAR Heat 5. Next, let's talk about tire wear settings. I generally work with normal settings, so normal wear and normal tire wear fall off. And the reason I do that is so that we can get a very good baseline, which is the most important thing for me to pass along to you guys. That way, if you're using more aggressive tire wear settings, more wear, less grip as the tires wear, then you'll know that you need to tighten the car up some in order to save the tires, uh, in particular, the right rear. If you're using less aggressive settings, which would be less tire wear, more grip in the tires as they wear, then you know that you can get by with running a little bit looser setup. So using normal settings for both tire wear as well as grip fall off allows me to create that baseline. I do enjoy using the other settings, particularly having the more aggressive settings and less grip as the fall off happens, but I think normal on both tire wear and fall off gives us a very good baseline. Also, the focus of my setups is on stability. I don't focus so much on a single lap speed or worry about single lap qualifying type speed. I'm more interested in the race and having a good car from the beginning of the run through the middle of the run and then finishing up the run strong as the fuel wears out. And then finally, when I'm doing setups for both uh, Cup, Xfinity, as well as the trucks, I like to keep these as close to each other as possible so that it gives the same feel across all three series. In general, Xfinity and trucks run a little bit tighter for me using the same setup as I would use in the Cup cars. So in general, I'm going to loosen those up just a little bit in order to get the identical feel that I have with Cup. So with that out of the way, let's move into the setup. Let's jump right into the race setup with the shock values. Uh, tens across the board, but this is another opportunity where uh, I actually spent most of my time testing at 15 and 10 across the board. Uh, I like that setting, uh, even though I chose not to go with that for the final version of the setup, uh, that was more to give you guys something as a baseline, but this is more where I spent most of my time. And one of the reasons I like the 15 and 10 for bump and rebound together is because it gives me some room to play around. I really don't like to go less than 10 on the bump or the rebound uh, based on the other settings that we have in uh, the setup itself. So, Having the 15-10 combination allows me to do things like this. Let's say I'm a little bit loose on exit. I can come down and reduce this a few or all the way to 10. So it gives me a little bit stiffer left rear than right rear with regards to the aggressiveness of the shock. So I can do little things like that without having to worry about dropping below uh, that 10 mark on either rebound or the bump setting. So a lot of different values here will work all depends on how aggressive you want the shocks and how stiff you want the ride quality particularly at a track like auto club which definitely has its fair share of bumps and waves and dips in the track moving on now to the weight settings maximum left side weight uh, front weight is at 52 percent this is a setting that you can definitely gain speed by lowering this number to 51 or 50 and so on. Uh, but I kept it at 52 because it gives us a nice stable base, which is what's most important for me to give to you guys. And it allows us to really even out the tire wear. Uh, as always, as I mentioned earlier in the video, one of my main goals to give you guys in a race setup is a setup that is very well balanced as far as how it wears the right front and the right rear. Now, obviously there are a lot of variables that go into that and driving style plays a huge factor in how you wear the tires, but I'm trying to give you the most stable and balanced set that I can. And I feel like the 52.0% is a very good starting value for you guys. But again, if you're looking for more speed, uh, looking for the car to rotate a little bit more, uh, for overall qualifying type speed, then lowering this number to 51.5, 51.0, and so on will definitely 
allow you to do that. Wedge at 48%. This is to help make up a little bit for the higher amount of front weight. So the front weight is to help stabilize the car and keep us from getting too uh, out of shape on a regular basis uh, as we enter and exit the corners. The wedge is to allow the car to ro rotate and really serves as a guide for how quickly the car rotates. So the front weight and the wedge work together. The higher the number you have on the wedge, the tighter the car will be. The slower it will want to uh, rotate and respond. The lower the number on the wedge, the more the car will want to rotate. So it gives you a very nice adjustment, particularly since it's one of the adjustments you have uh, during pit stops in a race. Now let's move on to the spring settings. 1,000 on the left front, 1,200 on the right front. That maximum 1,200 pound right front is similar to what we talked about with the front weight. That is a nice security blanket. It gives us a way to stabilize the car by using a very stiff right front spring. However, if you want the car to turn more, if you're a little bit too tight on entry, uh, then reduce this down to 1150, 1100 and so on, and that will certainly help the car to rotate and loosen the car overall. In the rear of the car, 400 and 600 for the rear springs, a couple of hundred pounds of uh, rear spring split here. And remember, the more split you have in the rear springs, meaning that the higher the right front is, or excuse me, the right rear is in relation to the left rear, uh, the looser the car will be, particularly from the center of the corner on exit. So we have to manage that first and foremost. And then also we want to manage how stiff the rear springs are overall. At a track like Auto Club, which is wide open, uh, has a lot of different grooves, it makes sense to use stiffer rear springs as well as based on some other uh, setup factors such as the big front sway bar that we're using. So if you want to make the car looser, your best option, uh, particularly from the center of the corner off, if you need the car to rotate more, then reduce this left rear spring and that will help to loosen the car from the center of the corner and on exit. If you're too tight, or excuse me, if you're already too loose uh, from the center of the corner on exit, then an option is to come in and increase the left rear spring 450 to 500 and so on will definitely tighten that car right up. Moving on to the tire settings, didn't spend a lot of time here, 19s on the left, 39s on the right, gave me about what I was looking for, but you certainly have uh, a lot of adjustability there. Lowering the air pressure settings will generally give you a little bit more grip uh, and stability in the car, but you'll lose a little bit of straight line speed doing so. Raising the air pressures will give you a little bit more straight line speed at the expense of uh, stability and a little bit of grip. So it's a balancing act just depending on how you want to run the car. In fact, if I remember correctly, the default setup for this track is really odd in the air pressures that they give you. So again, just try these things out. See what happens when you try some different air pressure packages and how the car reacts. Moving on now to the miscellaneous settings. Uh, plus three and minus three and a half in the front for camber. Uh, again, a lot of adjustability here for camber. Anything as low as about 1.0 and up as high as maybe three and a half, maybe four you can get by with. But just keep in mind that uh, with the camber, the more camber you run, the more likely it is to wear that tire out. So you have to balance uh, just like with everything else. It's a balancing act as to how much or how little camber you want to run. Front sway bar is at the maximum, 2.0. And again, that's really where I started with this setup. Um, I want to design something that is very stable um, and a little bit tight for everybody. Again, just so I can give you a solid baseline uh, that you can actually run laps with without having to worry about being incredibly loose to begin with. Next, we move on to the track bar, uh, 12 inches across the board. Uh, I've tested as high as about 13, 13 and a half with this setup. It just gets a little bit too loose for what I want to provide for you guys. But if you want to loosen the car overall, then increase the left and or the right side track bar, and that will hurt, certainly help the car to rotate. If the car is too loose, then lower the track bar numbers on both the left and the right side. Uh, if you want to get more specific with it, the left side track bar really can help with the entry of the corner and the right side track bar with the exit. 
So again, if going back to the left side track bar, if you are a little bit too tight on entry, then raising the left side track bar can really help with that. If you are too loose on exit, then lowering the right side track bar can help with that. So a lot of adjustability uh, with the track bar that can really change the handling of the car. Brake bias at around 77%. Uh, this is not something I use during race conditions, but uh, more for green flag pit stops. Anything from about 73 up to close to 80 has worked just fine for me. Just keep in mind that with brake bias, the higher the number, the tighter the car will want to be under braking. The lower the number, the looser the car will be under braking. So if you're coming in for green flag pit stops with too low of a brake bias, you take the risk of spinning the car out. So just keep that in mind. Grill tape at 50%. Again, not something I spend a lot of time messing with, but I think if memory serves me correctly, that's about as high as I would want to try to go on grill tape. But as always, that is uh, dependent on the RPMs to some extent. So the rear end ratio that you pair with that is going to matter. But 50% about as high as I want to go, but don't worry too much about that. As long as you're not overheating the engine, you should be fine. Wheel lock and steering offset are at my basic default at 10 degrees and 0 0.05 simply because these numbers work well for me. The wheel lock is a great way to adjust the uh, quickness or the sensitivity of the steering. The higher the number you use on the wheel lock, the quicker the steering reactions will be. So you won't have to turn the wheel near as much to get the same reaction as you're used to. The lower the number on the wheel lock down somewhere like 7, 8, maybe even 6, uh, will require you to turn the steering wheel more because it won't be as uh, reactive to your input. So again, all depends on how much wheel input you want to use. Then moving on to the gear settings, uh, this is an area where you have tons of adjustability. And I've used up to about three, the 33 I believe is the highest I've used here. And that turns quite a bit of RPMs, but I was still able to maintain quite a bit of speed there and I've used as little as 3.1 all of them worked just fine uh, there was very little difference in lap time on those so with the 3.1 you're going to be turning a lot fewer rpms than something like a 333 so adjust just based on what you're looking for if you're using a lot of tire wear a lot of grip fall off in the tires you might want to use a higher number here like the 333 since you're going to lose a lot of speed and a lot of rpm over the course of a run so that's going to take care of the cup cars now let's move on and briefly look at xfinity and the trucks with both xfinity and the truck setups being very similar to what we've already talked about in the cup we'll just take a few moments and uh, point out some differences here with uh, the cup and xfinity starting with the weight settings with xfinity and the trucks generally being a little bit tighter for me overall not to a huge degree but enough that i want to make a few adjustments generally uh, between xfinity and trucks versus the cup setup and here we notice that the front weight and wedge are a little bit different uh, again, just to give me a little bit freer feel to the car, anytime we can reduce that uh, front weight or nose weight, we're going to help the car to rotate a little more. And that certainly helps to free the car up and give me the feel I'm looking for out of the car. Next, moving over uh, to the miscellaneous uh, settings, you can see that the track bar, a little bit different here, 12 and a half and 12. Uh, but other than that, a lot of similarities here to the cup setup. And you notice that the gear ratio, 3.1, which works very well here in the Xfinity. Now let's move on to the trucks. Here in the trucks, uh, the setup is almost identical to what we saw in the Xfinity cars. So a couple of things to point out. One would be the track bar, slightly different on the track bar at 12.75 on the left, 12.13 uh, on the right. So slight difference there. And then I also wanted to show you guys uh, a little difference on the rear end ratio, 3.1 in Xfinity, 3.25 in uh, trucks, and then I also showed you the 333 in cups. So a wide gear selection as well as plenty of adjustability in the setup. And that's going to do it for today. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned for more NASCAR Heat 5.